All right, now we're going to talk about tensile fractures, how tensile fractures can occur in wellbores. In this example, we're also going to start working with a horizontal uh, plane uh, for a vertical wellbore. So we have sigma h max, sigma h min. I have used the equations of Kirch, and instead of using theta to be equal to uh, 90 degrees and 270 as we did for the uh, shear fractures, I'm going to use theta equal to zero and 100 AV. The result of that is going to be an equation of sigma theta theta that goes up to here. And for this case, I have added the term of the thermal stress that we're not going to discuss right now, but I'm going to discuss uh, later. Um, this is a hoop stress the radial stress, uh, we already know that that's going to be PW minus PP. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to match this hoop stress so that the value of hoop stress is equal to the tensile stress, the strength of the rock. And this is what we see in equation 617. Now the hoop stress, which is exactly equal to what I have over here, I set it to be equal to a negative value and to be the tensile strength of the rock. What that means is that I'm going to look for the points like here in this plot, let me enlarge a little bit. It's going to be the points here and there where the hoop stress is the minimum. And that minimum is going to be matched in this case to be the tensile strength of the rock. Notice that tensile failure is going to happen at the points are aligned with the direction of the maximum stress. So in this case, it's going to be located. Uh, let me just zoom out so just to show you that what is the direction of SH max. This is going to be located right over here. These are the points where I would expect a tensile fracture. A tensile fracture, as all other, uh, uh, let me rephrase that, a drilling induced tensile fracture equal as any other tensile fracture is going to be a fracture which is oriented perpendicular to the minimum principal stress. In this case, the minimum principal stress is the hoop stress and it's a tension. This is sigma theta theta, perpendicular to the radius, and the direction of, of the fracture in this case is perpendicular to that one. At the condition of failure, which is written in this equation like that, and it's uh, schematically drawn in this more circle diagram with this more circle, that means the minimum principal stress, the hoop stress, is going to meet the tensile strength. The radial stress could be different than the value, could be even a compressive stress, but at this point, when that more circle touches the tensile strength limit, is where, I, where I'm going to have a tensile fracture. That's a point at which a tensile fracture is going to happen. And similar to what I did before, I could calculate what is the wellbore pressure PV for which that tensile fracture occurs. We cannot change in the field what is the value of the far field stresses, sigma h max, sigma h min, or the value of pore pressure. We cannot either change what are the properties of the rock, but we can change what is the pressure of the wellbore, in this case, PV. And this value PV is going to be the maximum pressure that is acceptable so that I do not have a tensile fracture. If the pressure in the wellbore goes over PV, I'm going to have a tensile fracture. If the value of the pressure in the wellbore PW is lower than this limit of PV, I'm not going to have a tensile fracture. All right, so uh, let's see how we use this uh, in, uh, 
in here in an example. And this is going to be the same as example that we were working with in examples uh, 6.1 and 6.3. Now the question is related to tensor fractures. And uh, let me move this down. This is going to be problem 6.3. I don't know why it's going. It doesn't let me to go down. Come on, let me give you one more try. Okay, I think I have a software issue here. Uh, let me close it and open it again. Okay, so I'm problem 6.2 and 6.3. Problem 6.3 is going to be related to a tensile fracture. And the conditions are the same as the ones I have above. And I'm going to repeat the drawing that I had before. Let me just, to save some time now, just draw one arrow where this is SH max. In this direction, I have SH mean. I have a vertical wellbore as a result of the application of the stresses and the pressure in the wellbore, there's going to be a tensile fracture that extends from the wall of the wellbore and align with the direction of the maximum stress. And here now I'm going to use the value of the tensile strength of the rock. The question asks for calculating what is going to be the value of PB of breakdown pressure, that's what the B stands for, breakdown pressure, for the conditions that I have in the problem. SH max, SH mean, hydrostatic pore pressure, and the properties of the rock. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, let you work on this problem. Uh, basically, you know, just pause the video, uh, use the equation that you have uh, here, uh, 6, a, 18, knowing the pore pressure, sigma H max, sigma H min, after knowing the pore pressure and tensile strength of the rock, you can calculate PV. Let us ignore for now what is the influence of temperature, and we'll come back to that later, okay? So please uh, pause the video and start solving problem 6.3. I'll tell you the solution in a bit. All right, so this is the solution of the problem. Uh, we already knew what the effective stresses were before. So uh, here they are. This is sigma H max, sigma H min. Uh, here I have the pore pressure for hydrostatic condition. And I'm using now the tensile strength of the rock. This is going to be the value of PV, the breakdown pressure, 4320 PSI. If I convert that to mud weight, the result is 11.68 pounds per gallon. And what that means is that if I use a mud weight higher than 11.68, I'm going to create a tensile fracture that probably is going to propagate further than the wall of the wellbore. If I have, if I have a value lower than 11.68 pound per gallon, I'm not going to cause a, a tensile failure around the wellbore. So let's see how these tensile fractures look like in, in a wellbore. And for that, we're going to invoke the same uh, image, images that we were seeing before. And let, let us concentrate a bit now just in this image over here, which is the same that we were looking at for the case of the breakouts. Here, these wide wedges, these are the breakouts. And the tiny ones signal with these lines are the tensile fractures. So you see, here is one. I'm following it with the mouse. And I'm more or less 180 degrees, you have the other one, which goes in this direction. 
let's see how those look like in in real conditions and in this case in the laboratory so for this small well bore let's remind what we were having here we're applying the maximum stress in this location and we have a small well bore in the middle we will have the tensile fractures which are going to align with the direction of the maximum stress and they are here here and in this case uh, there was just one on the top there wasn't one in the bottom and when we zoom up in the cavity this is what you see more or less straight depends on the heterogeneity of the rock but this is the tensile fracture that occurs as a result of going above the tensile strength of the rock and this line that you see over here is similar to the lines that you see in this ultrasonic P wave image. You can also do the same with electrical resistivity images. And in this case, uh, the electrical resistivity images, you can see you can identify these tensile fractures in a wellbore uh, following these dark lines, 180 degrees. You have the other one on the other side of the wall. And in this case, also. Uh, you have the tensile fracture going through I'm following now with the mouse 180 degrees you have another one remember that these dark regions uh, with a very well defined width uh, those are the regions with no data where there is no measurement of uh, resistivity okay so this is how you determine the mud weight for causing tensile uh, failure around the wellbore. Something very nice and a very important to know about uh, wellbore stability is that in a wellbore you could have simultaneously shear failure, that is breakouts, and tensile failure, which are drilling induced tensile fractures. Both of them are possible. And as you see in these examples, from the wellbore here on the left, particularly this one, and this example here with a breakout and a drilling, and in this case, it's just a tensile fracture, uh, the stability of the wellbore may not be compromised, even though you have a tensile fracture and a breakout. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what are the limits of the mud pressure so that we keep the wellbore stable. If we lower the wellbore pressure and the, and the mud weight too much, we're going to have excessive breakouts and our wellbore may fail because of too much shear. On the other hand, if the pressure is too high, we may have some of these tensile fractures that propagate quite far away from the wellbore and form a high hydraulic a large hydraulic fracture and that's something that we do not want to do and we're going to see that uh, next time when we talk about the mud window